folks and um, welcome back to another video on weather <clears throat> this time we are going to look at interpreting weather forecasts what all the terminology means and how we can put it to use when we are float so kick things off one major source of the weather that, that we pick up on the vhf radio is the shipping forecast we have 31 areas all around the UK coastline and, and a couple down on the, uh, the Spanish and French coastlines as well. All these sea areas link into the UK forecast. One thing that jumps out at me for this particular image is some of the boxes are red and some of them aren't. The red ones are where the weather warnings have kicked in which is a minimum of a force six. And we'd need to go into each individual area to find out exactly what those weather warnings were and how strong we'd expect the wind to be. All of these boxes around the south coast, the bottom of the Irish Sea, they don't have any weather warnings. So you could be up at a force five or you could be a force one. You don't know without interrogating it further. First bit of information we get is we know when it was issued. This one was issued at 17.25 UTC on Thursday the 9th of November 2017. And it's valid from 1800 on that day to 1800 the day after. It gives us a general synopsis around about midday that day. And we know there's a high pressure 300 miles west of Trafalgar. 43 millibars, slow moving with little change. But that doesn't really give us much useful information because we've still got a vast chunk of water here. That is a minimum of a 4.6 and a kill, which probably means that there's a low pressure either somewhere in this vicinity here or it's moved past and we've got some kind of front moving down the North Sea. Either way, is windy and it's probably wet. So that's the shipping forecast. Now we move on to the inshore waters forecast. The inshore waters forecast is for 12 miles offshore. So it's valid to 12 miles offshore. And the UK coastline is broken down into 19 different sections. Where we're based on the Clyde we are in Syria, sea area 14, and that is the Mull of Galloway to the Mull of Kintyre, including the Firth of Clyde and North Channel. Same information really, issued at 1800 as opposed to 1725, still valid for the same time period though, 1800 on the Thursday the 9th to 1800 on Friday the 10th. Now, the general situation, it doesn't talk about the high pressure anymore. It now talks about the low pressure. So it's a bit more specific and useful. So we've got a low pressure to the north and a high pressure to the south, which is going to bring gales or severe gales to the north. So we've got two pressure systems essentially working together, um, and which is why the north half of um, the UK, Scotland, is windy and wet. So what do all these bits of information mean? Well, to start with, we've got a timing issue. So the time that that forecast was issued, imminent is within six hours. So frequently they talk about a storm warning that is expected imminently, within six hours of time of issue. Soon, six to 12 hours, later, more than 12 hours. Weather warnings. So if we kind of rewind back a couple of slides, we looked at that, that first image, which had all the red boxes or non-red boxes. If any of the sea areas or the inshore waters areas have a weather warning, those areas will turn red. And that is either a force six, which is a strong wind warning. It's a force eight, which is a gale warning. 
a force 10, which is a storm warning, and then a force 12, which is hurricane strength, although we don't generally get hurricanes in the UK, but we frequently have wind to that strength. We also get quite a lot of information on what the wind direction is going to do. And there's two or three bits of terminology that really help us kind of dial down what's going on and what changes we might expect. So we get veering. And the first time we're going to hear that is if we have a northerly wind veering northeasterly and, and becoming easterly, which means that the wind's going to change in a clockwise rotation. The opposite is an anti-clockwise rotation, and that's what we refer to as a backing wind. So it's changing from northerly to northwesterly. If we go back to a previous video when we are looking at low pressures and warm fronts and cold fronts, generally speaking, as the warm front passes, the wind backs, and then as the cold front passes and drags the rest of the low pressure system with it, the wind will veer. And in some cases, it can veer quite violently as well. Cyclonic is a name for significant changes in wind direction. Um, and one of the locations you find a cyclonic wind is at the very center of a low pressure where we know it's windy, but the wind can't quite reach the center due to the Coriolis effect. So you get significant changes. And then I guess the kind of opposite of that it is variable. So it's, it's random changes of direction, commonly referred to as light airs. And they're generally found around about a high pressure. Visibility. I'm going to concentrate on four of these. Um, and not go too much further because there's quite a few uh, bits of terminology here. Good visibility, <clears throat> five miles plus. Moderate, two to five. <clears throat> uh, poor is a thousand meters to two miles or a kilometer to two miles. And then fog, <clears throat> or in some cases, it's, re it's referred to as very poor, but it's less than 1,000 meters visibility. These things. We'll go the opposite way now. Let's start kind of smooth and slight. We go to slight, we go to moderate, rough, very rough. And I've stopped there with the actual numbers because after that we get high, very high, and phenomenal. If I'm being honest for a second, I don't really think you need to go out and learn every single one of these numbers. It will come with time. Moderate to rough though, one and a half, one point two five to two and a half is moderate. Rough two and a half to four. I would, I would know them. Would, would be my advice. Putting a little bit of kind of lateral thinking on this for a minute. If you're out in a boat, I quite often get asked what the sea state is, and that's quite a hard question to answer accurately because we don't really know. There's a lot of factors that will change the sea state. Tide, wind, are we up the top of a river? Are we in open water? What's the fetch, the, the distance that the wind can blow over? And standing on a boat, you can guess it, but you're never gonna get an accurate answer. So I don't really think it matters. That's just my personal viewpoint. Obviously you'll know when you're out in kind of rough and very rough conditions because you will start knowing that the weather's rough because you will start going I think I should turn around and probably not be out here and six meter seas are fairly big most boats start a little bit of a hard time within the two and a half meter two and a half to four meter uh, section so when we look at weather three very simple bits of terminology here fair it's probably not going to rain. Showers and rain. Fourth one gets thrown in there every now and again, somewhere in between these, uh, and that's snow or sleet. But generally summer, it's going to be fair, showers or rain. 
And then that brings us back to back to these again. And these are the two PowerPoints that we looked at um, at the very start. So shipping forecast. We now know we've got westerly four six to four eight. So that's a strong wind warning to a gale warning. Becoming cyclonic four to five for a time later. So significant changes in direction. Can't make up its mind. Force four or force five. So there's still a decent amount of wind there. Very rough, occasionally high. So we've got a very decent sea state running. Yeah, four to six meters is very rough. Um, six to um, I can't even think. Six to nine meters um, is what we call high. That's a big sea state. It's an exposed area of water up there, at uh, the very end of kind of Malin. Showers, a bit of rain at times. There's only two bits of terminology that could be thrown in there. Visibility is moderate, occasionally poor. So a bit of everything. Reason we've got a bit of everything is because the showers and, and we've got rain. So it changes. Inshore waters forecast, northwesterly five to seven, uh, decreasing four. So that red line on Syria 14 here will disappear later when we get the four. Moderate or rough, very rough near the Mullican Tire. So it's a quite a big stretch of water for this forecast to cover. Rain or showers, reasonably standard that, if I'm being honest. <clears throat> Moderate or visibility, fairly standard. Following 24 hours, northwesterly five to six, Variable three, so can't quite make its mind up about the direction, but we've got light airs um, around about a force three, and then picking back up to a four uh, a little bit later on. Moderate or rough, rain or showers, moderate or good. That's pretty standard. Um, one thing I would like to, to leave you with is take both of these forecasts. So go back to the shipping forecast and the inshore waters forecast, and add in your local knowledge, because both of these forecasts cover quite a large expanse of water. And the further you go inland, uh, up the top of the Clyde, for example, up to Glasgow, uh, or even where we are in Rue, that forecast will change. So we can put in another forecast, another method of finding the weather, and that is look outside, Mark one eyeball, best tool you're going to ever have for figuring out what the weather's going to do. And also look into the apps as well, because that becomes location specific. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you've got any questions, uh, please pop me an email and uh, we shall see you again soon on another video. Thank you.